the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. One of the indices as we have taught to measure spiritual growth God has taught us here again that there are only two scriptural indices to measure whether or not a man or a people are growing spiritually. Number one is your degree of conformity experientially to the image of the Christ. Your degree of conformity to the image of the Christ. Number two is your comprehension of the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom these two things must happen in your life for you to be said to be growing spiritually if for any reason at any point in your Christian experience you are not conforming to the fullness of the image of the Christ you are not growing and even if you are conforming to the fullness of the image of the Christ but you do not have access to illumination the walking knowledge of the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom your christian experience will be barren and frustrated and it will still sabotage the fullness of all that christ died for so on one hand we must contend through intimacy encounters with his word to rise to a point where our lives become an undoubtable reflection of the reality of who Christ is and then on the other hand we must have access to illumination light and understanding it says the entrance of thy word giveth light then it gives understanding unto the simple and one of the mysteries that we have come to understand that control so many things so many results in the kingdom is a mystery that the bible identifies as thanksgiving now let me tell you something in your spiritual journey you should be able to tabulate the principles of the kingdom that through the ministry of the holy spirit you have had access to versus the results they were designed to produce that way your christian experience becomes predictable so when you talk about wealth and prosperity you should be able to define the principle that governs it health and longevity the principle that governs it deliverance and breakthrough the principle that governs it are we together now influence and increase the principle that governs it if you cannot match the outcomes you desire versus the kingdom principles that are responsible for delivering them your christian life will be barren because you will largely be guessing you see our ignorance in the body of christ is not ignorance of what we want we already know what we want but the mysteries to be engaged that deliver the results we desire we do we either do not know them or we do not understand their operation are we together now knowing them like i've always taught here is like having the ingredients for food if you have the ingredients for fried rice you have done well but that's not equal to fried rice you must understand the combination one mistake can make fried rice become something else one mistake are we together yeah. that's how it is so you must work with god to find out what ingredients are required for the outcome remember i gave an analogy one time i, I can't remember when um, if I want to buy if I want to make yam and egg sauce I may be wrong but I think that rice is not needed in that combination 
Is that true? So if I am on my way to the market and you sell rice for me, rice is good, but it's not needed as far as what I want to produce is concerned. Now, there are many useful informations in the kingdom, but you have to find out which ones are responsible for the formation of what you desire. So that, that certain lights are available does not mean they are necessarily needed for this aspect of your spiritual journey. When a believer gets born again, there are certain realities that are true and consistent with God's character, but they are not part of the ingredients required to lay the foundation for his spiritual work. Are we together now? So if someone just gets born again, I'm not going to be teaching him on the principles for, of, for wealth and prosperity. It's unnecessary. It's a wrong foundation. It's like using zinc for foundation. Zinc is important for a building, but there is a season when zinc is needed. When the house is already built, then you will need zinc. Are we getting it now? So it is important that as we approach the word of God, we stay with the Holy Spirit to define for us the ingredients required for every season of our growth. He is the only one who has in his hands the blueprint of the mysteries required per time, per growth. You cannot guess what you think you need. It's the same arrogance that a patient would demonstrate seeing a doctor. When you come before a doctor, you don't come and say, Doctor, I think I need Panadol. No, 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 no. You may not even have headache. So you listen. Are we together? There are times you feel healthy, but the doctor will tell you you need a drip. It's up to you to trust the wisdom and the sacrifice of the doctor. Brothers and sisters, this is one of the excellencies of working with the Spirit. He minimizes wastage in your life. So you don't invest your life doing many spiritual things that are not profitable. They may be spiritual, but are they profitable as defined by the season you are in? He says the men of Issachar had an understanding of the times and they knew what they ought to do. Let the Holy Spirit be the one to unveil the curriculum of your spiritual development. It is costly to guess. It is costly to copy. You must work with him to define the blueprint part time. So there are seasons in your life where he will switch his emphasis to your finances. You may feel you are getting carnal. He will never talk to you about spiritual growth again. Because according to his desire for you, the formation of the spiritual house he's raising necessitates that you now know the principles of wealth. So even if you are fasting, he will still lead you back to the principles of finances. And then there are times, even if I'm teaching on finances in Koinonia, his personalized dealings with you is helping you conform towards the character of the Christ. So after you benefit from my teaching, when you go back with him, he would fold that script and keep it to be reviewed when that season is open in your life and you will continue your dealing on character with him. This is how men grow spiritually. But most Christians don't respect the leadership of the spirit. We think because a truth is spiritual, it is applicable now. No, not every truth is needed at every time. The Holy Spirit must prioritize truth like a spiritual house. Then you will find out if you follow him, I guarantee you, you will never miss out on any area. There may be seasons where you think you have not known certain things yet. Just walk with him. Because by the time you get the basics, he will now say this was a simple issue. That's why I did not emphasize it in your growth. If not, we will major on the minors and minor on the majors. Academically speaking, there are different courses and we add credit units to them according to their relevance with respect to the degree you want to obtain. There are courses that are one credit unit. You can study them in three days. There are courses that are six credit units, three credit units. That's how it is in the spirit. Not every truth has equal value. They are all truth, but they do not have equal value. As far as the, the, the requirement for your destiny is concerned. Please, I'd like you before we continue to pray in one minute and say, Holy Spirit, I embrace your leadership. It, it's, it's not just important to be filled with the Holy Spirit. 
There are so many believers filled with the Holy Spirit. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. He didn't say, the Lord is my colleague. The Lord is my shepherd. He leads me. A sheep does not have a system of defense. It's only defense. It's his alignment to the voice of the shepherd. A sheep does not have horns. It cannot fight. His protection is absolutely dependent on the wisdom of the shepherd. So he says like a sheep, the Lord is my shepherd. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of these mysteries, and I've shared it many times, I would share it again, is the mystery called Thanksgiving. There is a revelation about Thanksgiving that many believers do not understand in the body of Christ. And so we have lost cheap battles. We have given ourselves prey to situations and circumstances that truthfully speaking, without any effort on our own, would have established cheap victories. May someone get this revelation today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thanksgiving is one of the mysteries that we see being practiced in the Bible again and again. That every time a people came to express their gratitude as individuals and as a corporate entity, there was such a dramatic response that went beyond the object of their thanksgiving. They thanked God for certain things and God moved far beyond what they were thanking him for. We see this even in the life of Jesus, the apostle of our faith. Many times in scripture, we saw him engage this mystery and it produced dramatic results. So I want to share with us very quickly, why should I give thanks? Why should I incorporate this mystery as part of the principles for establishing the victory of Christ Jesus in my life? Why thanksgiving? Number one, very quickly, please. The Bible tells us that it is a good thing to give thanks psalms 92 from verse 1 to 3 tells us it is a good thing to give thanks unto the lord and the bible says every good and perfect gift comes from above so if thanksgiving is a good thing then it means thanksgiving is consistent with the character of god and worth practicing and worth living by the first reason why you must give thanks is that it is a good thing to give thanks unto the lord it is godly to be thankful write it down it is godly to be thankful it is spiritual to be thankful it's a good thing it is godly it is spiritual to be thankful number two first thessalonians 5 verse 18 the bible tells us there that it is the will of god for us to give thanks first thessalonians 5 verse 18 it says in everything give thanks for this is the will of god now listen the situation is not the will of god your response is what is the will of god it says in everything regardless of the outcome it should not affect your response give thanks for this the thanksgiving is the will of god so regardless of what is around me regardless of the outcome it should never affect my understanding and my approach of being ever thankful this is the will of god in christ concerning you that in all things you give thanks the second reason why we must engage the mystery of thanksgiving is that it is the will of god and we know that the only way the kingdom comes is when his will is being done matthew 6 verse 10 right thy kingdom come only when and if your will is being done so there is a dimension of the kingdom that needs to find expression in my life and that dimension is at the mercy of me fulfilling the will of god as far as thanksgiving is concerned meaning if i do not give thanks i rob god of the opportunity of demonstrating a dimension of the reality of his kingdom it is the will of god to give thanks number three 
thanksgiving according to john chapter 6 from verse 6 to 13 help us media is the secret to multiplication thanksgiving is the seed for more whenever you want more of anything in your life the key is not complaining the key is not grumbling the key is that you engage the mystery of thanksgiving multiplication and this he said to prove him for he himself knew what to do i love jesus he inspires me i love it every time the bible says he knew what to do it's terrible to not know what to do jesus knew what to do philip answered him 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little we're reading to 13 8 one of the disciples andrew simon peter's brother said unto him there is a lad here that had five barley loaves and two small fishes but what are they what are they lord i have this little talent what is it called with respect to what i need for my life lord i want to build a house and all i have is ten thousand naira in my account what is ten thousand with respect to seven million or ten million that i need and jesus engages a mystery verse 10 and jesus said make the men sit down now there was so much grass in the place so the men sat down in number about five thousand eleven and jesus took the loaves and when he had what he distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that were set down and likewise of the fish as much as they would 12 when they were filled he said to his disciples gather up the fragments that remain that nothing may be lost 13 therefore they gathered them together and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves which remain over and above unto them that had eaten thanksgiving that's all jesus did he took the bread he took the loaves lifted it to heaven and said father thank you because wherever there is thanksgiving the grace that multiplies will always answer whenever there is genuine thanks those who know this have changed their lives overnight you see when you study the old testament many times people were punished for murmuring one of the things that brought the anger of god upon the nation of israel was murmuring and complaining is it only moses you will speak to this and that and that and that and they went through catastrophic events the bible says jesus lifted the baskets and he gave thanks the african culture has trained our minds to not be thankful are we together someone gives you one one thousand naira every day and then you now say sir are you not knowing that i'm growing now you started giving me one one thousand before i married are you aware that my wife is pregnant with twins we always want more by placing demands through complaint by placing demands through ingratitude but in the kingdom the system of the kingdom is such that every time what you have is not enough the way you let god know is to say thank you thank you is the code in the spirit that says lord i need more you don't say give me more you say lord i thank you for the one you gave me and then he knows that it, you have authorized yourself to move to the next level of supply can someone say thank you jesus say it with all your heart thank you jesus don't say lord except you are not lord i must finish this year well i must and i must finish no it, it must be my turn to chop no lord thank you for me to be witnessing the 16th day of december i give you thanks and god will say that's right that is the code for finishing the year that's the code for qualifying for 2017 thanksgiving demons don't give thanks they never give thanks not one is not once in scripture there are some things demons cannot do they cannot give thanks it's not in the character of satan to give thanks it's anti-satan to be thankful you frustrate satan when you give thanks not only is it a sign of contentment 
is a mystery that acknowledges that there is a God above you and that that God is worthy of thanks and that he has more than you have experienced and that it is within his power to extend his benevolence to your life say it again thank you Jesus the key to multiplication Jeremiah 30 verse 9 Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 9 Jeremiah chapter 30 am I 19 I'm sorry not 9 Jeremiah 30 verse 19 I like us to read together it's projected if your eyes can get to the projector screen let's read together one to read and out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry and as a result what will happen I will who will do the multiplication I will multiply them and they shall not be few I will also glorify them and they shall not be small just because there is a voice of thanksgiving to say Lord I have just one child now but I give you thanks not to say Lord will I die like that with only girls in my house some of those culture driven antichrist mentality lord i give you thanks there are many women who are barren but you have been faithful i celebrate you for what you have done and the bible says i will multiply them the code in the spirit is thanksgiving don't trivialize what i'm sharing with you when you get to a door you don't cry when you get to a door you don't weep when you get to a door you use a key a giant door can be at the mercy of a little key you can put in your pocket but if that key is not there that door will not open forever the key for more could it be that there are people seated here brothers and sisters who god is ready to give surprises in the next 15 days but the the next dimension of god's grace is at the mercy it says out of them shall proceed thanksgiving not complaining you see why many nations never rise our economic theories are designed to complain we shout and say everything blame who is not doing what blame this a mother is blaming father father blaming mother children blaming everybody and while they are doing that God is looking with all the love in his heart is limited by our lack of understanding the principles of the kingdom Lord, at my age, I'm earning 40,000. Is that a testimony? Your name is being mocked and God says, my God. Someone else, that 40,000 is his prayer point. Is what he put as a benchmark. The secret to multiplication is thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Number, number what? Number four. The fourth reason why we give thanks. According to Luke 17, please. 13 to 19. Is that it is also the secret to wholeness and perfection. Thanksgiving is the secret to wholeness and perfection write this down it is the last step in exercising your faith in your faith equation the last step is thanksgiving haven't engaged the word haven't spoken haven't obeyed the last step hmm. a man of god said this and i quote he said, when you are trying to call God, the last digit of his phone number is thanksgiving. Like you press 080, are we together? When you get to the last digit, the very last digit is thanksgiving. And they lifted up their voices and said, Master, have mercy on us, the 10 lepers, 14. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go shew yourself unto the priest. 
and it came to pass that as they went they were cleansed look at me they were cleansed but not whole to be cleansed means the leprosy left but their hands were still showing you could see leprosy on them are we together now if you saw them you tested them in the hospital it will show that there was no more leprosy but their fingers were still stunted their physical expression still showed that they once suffered leprosy and the bible says and one of them see how scarce the spirit of thanksgiving is only one out of every ten and one of them when he saw that he was healed turned back and with a with a whisper quietly and say i don't want people to know the lesson uh -uh. the bible says with a loud voice glorified god next verse and fell down on his face at his feet doing what giving him thanks and he was an unqualified person a samaritan a samaritan not a jew next verse and jesus answering said were they not ten cleansed but where are the nine next verse there are not found that return to give thanks save this stranger 19 and he said unto him hallelujah arise go thy way you have fulfilled the last step of the faith equation and now your faith has made you whole your faith has made you whole Are we together? Yeah. So you had the fibroid. They operated the fibroid and had to remove the womb. But you are alive. Yes, you are alive, but there's no more child again. Medically speaking. Is that true? The Bible says the woman returned and said, Lord, although they caught my womb and I'm alive, thank you. Take it to the next dimension. I give you praise. And then as she's giving praise and rejoicing, all of a sudden the God who made womb before makes another one and I'm standing here only because you made you made a way when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over you made a way and we're standing here only because you made listen there are many things in our lives that are not yet perfected and the key is although we have seen the miracle you came and you testified yes but many of us have stopped God from finishing you know how you build a house and God has a paint, has a wallpaper, has a finishing. And you say, Lord, I am so grateful. I mean, I'm so happy that I'm inside. And God says, do you know, if I show you the picture of this house, that I'm, I'm still yet to paint and finish. How many of you know, those who do architecture and construction, that the things you use to finish the house can be more expensive than the whole building. So there is more compared to what you've seen there is a bigger side to the miracle you only saw a small piece of the pie but we complain and grumble and compare ourselves were there not nine that returned it says go thy way your faith has perfected you your faith has perfected you Philippians chapter 4, please, from verse 6 to 7. Still on the fourth reason. Philippians chapter 4, 6 and 7. Let's hurry up, please. 6 and 7. It says, be careful. The word be careful there doesn't mean be careless. It's the word anxiety. Be anxious for nothing, it says. But in everything, listen. Listen to how believers pray. By prayer, and supplication 
perfected with thanksgiving let your request there is a spiritual formula for getting your request known it says when you bring the supplication and the prayer you give thanks let your request be known unto God then it says the peace of God which surpasseth all understanding shall keep garrison your minds through Christ Jesus so when you pray haven't made supplications you know let me tell you something please look at me the the principles of the kingdom sometimes we look so childish that in our matured world our world of excessive adulthood and intelligence we are unable to just submit ourselves to the childlike principles of the word of God that's why Jesus said you have to become like one of these little ones if you really want to inherit the kingdom if you want to walk in the experience of the kingdom you must lay this excessive um, um, this sense of adulthood we are not children here the Bible gives a very simple formula that when you make your requests add it with thanksgiving hallelujah mm. the fifth reason why thanksgiving number five it is the secret to supernatural victories in the spirit the secret to supernatural victories brothers and sisters let me tell you i can tell you this from the authority of god's word this ministry and in my own life one of the cheapest ways to command victories over the powers and the forces of darkness is to properly and scripturally engage the mystery of thanksgiving very very powerful truth second chronicles 2 verse 22 to 24 second chronicles 2 22 to 24 and then we'll look at psalm 92 1 to 15 but we'll just look at 1 and 3 10 and 15 second chronicles 2 verse 22 to 24 sorry second chronicles 20 verse 22 to 24 media are you with us second chronicles 20 thank you 22 to 24 this was jehoshaphat listen the victory that was commanded listen and when they began to sing and to praise the lord said what ambushments against the children of ammon moab at mount seir which were come against judah and they were smitten look what happened 23 do you know while this was happening the children of israel were not seeing it they were at the other side of the mountain giving thanks and saying you are good and your mercy endures forever and then at the other side god was commanding great victories for the children of ammon and moab stood up against the inhabitants of mount seir utterly to slay and destroy them and when they had made an end of the inhabitants of seir everyone helped destroy imagine with me how the last two died everyone helped destroy another as if it was a charm you just fight your three of us plan to go and destroy pastor alpha we're tired of what god is doing in his life and we summon whatever arsenals we have and instead of him wasting his time on profitless things he engages thanksgiving and while he is doing that something is orchestrated makes me kill her and then i turn and we discuss who dies first she kills me and kills herself now i hope you know that these guys were warriors they were not children who were hungry they were trained soldiers you know how long it took for them to mobilize themselves and say let's come together as a threefold cord that cannot be easily broken and destroy judah the city of praise and while all of that were happening they listened to a prophet of god and he said look set the singers and the priest is that how you go to fight you put men of war and then women 
and then children that's how you fight war but it says this kind ah, reminds me of Psalm 149 it says let the high praise of God be in their lips and a double-edged sword in their hands right to bind their kings with the fetters of iron and to execute vengeance upon their nobles he said to to um, paraphrase it now to execute upon them the written judgment how the enemy will be defeated is none of your business your part is to engage obediently he says having the readiness to judge all disobedience when your own obedience is complete hallelujah this was perfectly adumbrated Ejimi, in the story of Esther and a wicked man called Mordecai are we together now yeah and uh, Haman I'm sorry Haman was plotting to annihilate the Jews and he leveraged on his influence with the king and while all of that conspiracy were going on news got to to Esther and instead of her to go and murmur and say am i your wife or not say am I, you are my wife say will they kill my people just that's how many women will complain vashti did it she was out it will happen to anybody because we are all women in the spirit vashti did it she was shown the way out but look look her you know why she excelled she listened to mordecai the same way the church prospers if we listen to the holy spirit mordecai was playing the position he started advising her right from scratch referred her to hey guy that's how she got to the palace she listened to mordecai at a point in time she even wanted to be rebellious but she came back to her senses and then she went and met him and said oh king i want to flaunt your glory this I, I want to let the people see how excellent you are king said go ahead and when she gathered all the people the king looked at her paraphrase and said keep doing this thing every time do it again you see kings were stupid twice in scripture one when they took wine the other one during their birthdays there was a kind of dance that kings received that they did not seek advice kings were wise people they used divination to make judgments so when a king vetoes all the astrologers a lady danced her way to remove the head of a prophet a prophet but a dance removed his head they were dead bodies falling to the earth and none escaped someone here is giving god thanks and you will go back and see a rearrangement that's not how you left things that's not how you left things you left bills you left sickness you left all kinds of things but while you were engaging the mystery somebody is being forced to wake up from his sleep and saying how long will you keep disobeying me you must bless my daughter here's her account number see it in a dream zero zero two five seven one you are dancing here i know some of you don't believe these things happen you see there's a way you disobey god so much that you don't even know that certain possibilities exist when samuel prophesied to saul he said on your way going it will coincide with two men all of them holding loaves they will salute you and give you as if they don't know what to do with it that's what happens when the light of god shines upon you men will bless you for reasons they cannot explain that's how pharaoh blessed the nation of israel it was like a charm that's why when they left he said what did i do something was at work released through thanksgiving when they conquered the nation of israel and drowned them miriam raised up a song i will sing unto the lord she said for he has triumphed gloriously the horses and his rider have been thrown into the sea god said you are ready for the next level when they murmured they were in trouble are we together now very quickly let me give us three biblical ways to show gratitude three biblical ways to show gratitude
Number one, we'll look at a few scriptures. Psalm 22 verse 22, the A part, and then Psalm 96 verse 3. The first way to show gratitude is through testimonies. Testimonies. Testimonies are a way to demonstrate thanksgiving and gratitude. Read with me please, the A part. One to go. I will declare thy name unto my brethren. I will declare it. I won't be silent. God has been good to me. I won't be silent and say, let them not say, I have, I'm, I'm bragging too much. It's not a lie. He was good to me. He is good to me and I still want him to continue to be. So I engage thanksgiving. You know, sometimes we allow people's cynical attitude make us guilty to sincerely express the goodness of God. How many people are afraid to say what God has done in their lives? Because there are all kinds of people with wicked hearts. The moment you say, I was sitting down, someone just brought the car keys of a house. You say, where is the house? Show us the picture. The, the, all these liars who just come and speak. You know, people are, the, the system of Babylon has trained people to hate the joy of others. They may be sincere people. You just watch someone buy a suit that he couldn't have afforded before. And say, be careful, though. It's only God that knows what everybody is. Why must you be cynical? Testimonies are powerful, provided they are communicated with a sincere heart. When your motive is to come and waste time and make noise, then that does not glorify God. But when God has done good things in your life, brothers and sisters, let me tell you, you perfect every happening and the dealing of God in your life through testimonies. Psalm 96 verse 3. Quickly please. Psalm 96 verse 3. It says, Declare his glory among the hidden, his wonders among all people. Declare it. Declare it. Declare it. When you stand to testify, it's not pride. You're not bragging. Provided you don't tell lies and you don't behave childish. You come before the people of God. Look, look what God has done for me. I didn't expect that I would be eating right now. But look at what God has done. Look at the faithfulness of God. And the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Meaning it has capacity to impart faith and reproduce itself. So when someone is listening to you and seeing, let your light so shine before men that they may see. And then through it, give your father glory. The moment you hear the testimony of someone, cancer, HIV, whatever, and then healed supernaturally by the power of God, you now sit down and see how you have been insulting God simply because you have a breast lung. And you say, no, 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 no. But it, it, I mean, if someone was healed of A, B, C, D, all at once, my God is faithful and you lift up their spirit. Testimonies are powerful, brothers and sisters. There are many people who receive so much from God but refuse when you were going through the challenges you told everybody including those who could not help you now that God brought a miracle he said no, no I, I'm, my nature is not to say anything I'm, I'm a quiet person by nature God does not just want you to keep quiet over what he has done how will they attest to the fact that he is faithful are we together now number two the second way to show thanksgiving is to sing praises write it don't wish praises don't recite praises the bible tells us how to praise god he said sing praises Turn your testimonies into songs. Turn your testimonies into melodies. Still Psalm 22, verse 22, the B part. And then we'll look at Psalm 28, verse 7. Please quickly, Psalm 22, verse 22, the B part. It says, in the midst of the congregation, I will... It is here, I will praise you in my room alone. I will praise you. I will sing. In the midst of the congregation... I will praise you. Psalm 28 verse 7. 
the Lord is my strength and shield my heart trusted in him and I am helped he said therefore my heart greatly rejoiced and with what is the tool of praise with my not just the song of worship team there are times your gratitude will compose a song with my song will I praise him Psalm 105 verse 2 let me give you a few scriptures to really help you there Psalm 105 verse 2 sing unto him sing psalms unto him talk ye of his wondrous words he says sing unto him bless his name sing unto him let him know you are so grateful you have converted your gratitude to a song two more scriptures i found this and i think it was quite interesting first chronicles 16 verse 9 first chronicles 16 verse 9 Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Sing it one more time. Oh God, you are my God, and I. sing unto him sing psalms talk of his wondrous works did i we've read that already psalm 69 69 verse 30 psalm 69 verse 30 psalm 69 verse 30 i will praise the name of god with a song i will magnify him with thanksgiving so you sing praises unto him number three the third scriptural way you express thanks and gratitude is through your seed through your giving through your seed through your giving psalms 116 verse 17 through your seed your giving sacrificial quality heartfelt giving not something you yourself cannot give yourself i will offer unto thee there is something called a sacrifice of thanksgiving and i will call upon your name a sacrifice of thanksgiving amos chapter 4 i found this scripture and it blessed me so much verse 5 amos chapter 4 and verse 5 it says and offer what a sacrifice of thanksgiving with living and proclaim and publish the free offerings for this like at you O ye children of Israel it's not possible for us to get CEV I wish we could get any other version a particular version put it in an excellent way but it says offer this one you are not singing offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving and then it says publish a free will it says i also oh, no 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 verse you're making a mistake verse five media well it's the same thing right just just it's okay just just leave it that's all right offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving do you know let me tell you something according to scripture now even in the new testament men prayed and they sacrificed two things that went hand in hand prayer and giving remember cornelius 
Acts chapter 10. God told two reasons why he attracted the presence of God. Number one, your giving. Number two, your prayers. The, the, the scripture we read before this says how that I will offer to you a sacrifice of thanksgiving, then I will call upon your name. Giving and prayer go hand in hand. But simply because we have listened to people who have insulted every man of God, written rubbish, junk journalism, published every kind of nonsense to think that men of God are out to just manipulate people. And here and there, I know that you will find excesses here and there. But it still does not negate the fact that it's a principle. There is a dimension of your speaking that only your seed can speak. That you celebrate God and you thank Him for His faithfulness and bring out a seed. If it's not sacrificial, it's not a seed of thanksgiving. The Bible calls it a sacrifice of thanksgiving. I want to challenge everyone here. As God grants you grace before you finish this year, if not today, find a sacrifice of thanksgiving. In fact, frankly speaking, that is the standard way it should be done. You shouldn't just talk about it and say, wow, this is nice. I love you too much to not tell you the truth. Do you know, while I was studying this already, I gave my own sacrifice before I came. And the interesting thing about me and God is, I don't choose what I like. You may not have faith for that now, but may God grant you grace to grow to a level where you allow God to decide everything including your giving. He decided your wife, he decided your job, why not your money? You see, the part you have not given God is where you will not get the best of him. Hallelujah. Something dangerous happened to me this evening because while I was talking with the Lord and I said, oh, I just felt it in my heart. I said, no, 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 no. The people of God, it's important to challenge them on that wise. And I just remembered, every true shepherd must lead the way. And I said, okay, Lord, so what would you have me give? Very interesting, eh, Jimmy. God did not tell me what to give. He told me what should be left in my account. This is like, this is like, maybe 30 minutes before I came here and off it went oh no come on it all belongs to you oh, oh it all belongs to you it all belongs to you oh, oh, oh. And so I gave it with all joy Thanksgiving. Two minutes accident will scatter your life. They will use that money to bury you and fight over the change. <laughs> Are we together? You leave it for a foolish person who has no discernment and wisdom. That was the frustration of Solomon. He said, I've worked so hard to build this. Now I would die and give it to an irresponsible son who didn't go through what I went through. He said, this is vanity. I'm cheated I'm still rich but I feel cheated because I mean how can I just give somebody who has no sense let me digress a bit and challenge you make him Lord of everything make him Lord of everything it is foolish to surrender part and leave part God does not need your money he doesn't need your fame Anything given to God is well taken care of. God is a good manager. Our fears and insecurities which are a sign through faith, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice. It takes faith to give. That you trust God. So through your seed. Let me give us one more. The fourth way that we give thanks is by continually seeking him and promoting his interest. First Chronicles 16 verse 11. By continually seeking him. By seeking him is not like he's, he's missing. Seeking him is simply a, a figurative expression to communicate your desire for the depth of more of him. 
I'm chasing after you No matter what I have to do I need you more and more Lord, I'm chasing after you No matter what I have to do I need you more and more 16 verse What did I give you? 11, not 12 Seek the Lord and his strength. He says seek his face continually. Not when the money now comes. You know, it's amazing how people seek God when they are trusting him for certain things. We've dealt with this. It has become an anthem. That when your pursuit for God is tied to certain results, when you get the result, I'm seeking God because I want to twist his hand and force him to give me this lady to marry. The day you marry her, you set a goal and you achieved it. That goal has been achieved. There is no impetus to seek God again. I'm seeking God because I want to be a millionaire. Right? The moment you have a million naira or a million dollars or whatever, that's the end of it. You shouldn't seek him again. Why seek God when you have all the cars and houses? Why seek God when you have eight, nine, ten zeros in your account? Foolish people seek God for things. Foolish people, not bad people, foolish people seek God for things. Never seek God just for things. Lord, I am seeking you because if you are God, you must give me this pure water. No, 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 no. Don't try to twist his hand. Your heavenly father knows that you have need of these things. It says for the Gentiles run after these things. And your father knows that you have need of these things. But you seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. You see, if you seek the kingdom of God, the word righteousness there, it's not just talking about righteous standing. It means God, God's modus operandi, his principles. You seek his kingdom, his influence, and you also seek to understand his principle. In doing it, you will find the keys that will cause other things to be added. Hallelujah. Don't seek God for things. Seek him and seek to promote his interest. That's why we are called ambassadors. A true ambassador is committed to promoting the interest of the nation he represents. An ambassador does not have an agenda of his own. If at any point an ambassador is found having an agenda of his own, he's a rebel. He's a rebel. The Bible calls us ambassadors. God has an intention. There is something he's doing. And we must plunge our entire lives to see his purposes fulfilled. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. It is not only important that we bless God and thank Him. It is important that we praise Him with understanding. It is important that we thank Him with understanding. When you thank God in ignorance, the power is released through knowledge, not the motions. Knowledge, the revelation that backs what you are doing. So you can be dancing around and not know why you are dancing and sweat by his mercies and out of his love he will bless you but in his system everything that is not done with understanding is the same as not doing it so if i give without understanding is the same as not giving if i sing without understanding is the same as not singing don't just do things have the understanding that makes them powerful just like many people say in the name of Jesus rise up and walk it's not just speaking with understanding hallelujah God has been so faithful in my life in this ministry in our lives we will not only be disobedient we will be wicked if we are not lavish in expressing our gratitude to him not just by dancing but that you take your entire heart and put it on a tray and lift it up to him and say lord you deserve everything 
I was just thinking of the faithfulness and the mercies of God. We have traveled this year like none other. The deliverances of the Lord. You hear the testimony that the lady came to share? Their truck. Do you know, do you know how easy it is to die when God is not protecting you? You can have a boil on your neck and die. Because the devil takes advantage of anything that gives him entrance. People just had headache. My head, my head. The wife goes to soak towel and comes out and meets a dead man. Thanksgiving. We trivialize a lot of things. People crying, recession, things are not going well. There are people, I think it was Eddie one time, we were going to Kaduna and he told me that um, some neighbors or so were begging for rice. I'm not saying begging you for money come with a cup and say give me two or three or four cups my wife and my children are about dying but then the mercies of god some of us quarter to it finishing something happens again that was not even tied to your tithing because some of us have not been faithful at all yet his mercies you know when you know the mercies of god you will really love him you will really really love him brothers and sisters in the next two or three minutes we are going to rise up and I want us to so lavishly worship him and thank him. Just two or three minutes. And then I'll just speak over our lives. If we miss out, I know you have danced, you have jumped around. But right now I want you to just reflect in one minute on the faithfulness, the goodness, the kindness. It's grace, your grace. Lord, I'm nothing without you. Grace, your grace shines on me. Your grace, your grace. I'm nothing without you. Grace, your grace shines on me. Sujana nena ke. Sujana, Sujana. Godia nena ke. Godia, Godia. Sujana nena ke. Godia nena ke, Godia, Godia, Sujada nena ke, Sujada, Sujada, Godia nena ke, Godia, Godia, Sujada nena ke, Sujada, Sujada, Godia nena ke, Godia, Godia, Sujada nena ke. Godia nena ke Godia Godia Na gode Na gode Na gode Ni na gode Na gode Ya Yesu na gode Ni na gode Na gode Na gode Na gode Na gode, 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 na na
and begin to count your blessings. Lord, I was in front of that car. It would have killed me. I know it was not my faith, but your mercies. I watched you raise school fees for me in a way and manner. I saw that cause waved. Kapare take it high. Are you ready to worship him? Count your blessings, Koinonia, for the job you gave me. You changed my financial status this year. You opened my eyes and gave me understanding. I got born again this year. I got filled with the Holy Ghost this year. I understood the word of God this year for multiplied grace for uncommon influence pray tell him thank you my father and my mother came back this year they were at the verge of the force but by your grace you stepped in Worship him. Jesus, I say thank you. I never had any plane crash. No car accident. You gave me a new house this year. 
gave me accurate knowledge. Oh, 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 oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. my life I watched the power of witchcraft broken oh, 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 oh. victory belongs to Jesus victory belongs to him From the depth of your heart, hey, oh, 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 oh. hey, hey, For the next two minutes, we are going to thank God as a family. We have seen the hand of God in mysterious ways this year miracles upon miracles change lives men and women here bodily entered into dimensions in the spirit lift your voice and thank God for koinonia for victory for victory for influence for grace ha. Victory belongs to him. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Sing from the depth of your heart. Hallelujah. You know, brothers and sisters, time will fail me to begin to tell you the things that God has done for us as a ministry. Influence, favor, access, multiplication of grace. When the media department was submitting a progress report preparing for the dinner, one of the most touching testimonies is that as far as the moment any teaching is uploaded online an average of 1 million downloads within the first 24 hours no publicity no sir if I by the finger of God brothers and sisters we have seen answered prayers it was here you dropped the request Yet the answer was waiting for you at home. And you saw miracles. People transformed by the hand of God. I don't know about you. But brothers and sisters help me. Thank this God in one minute. And say Lord thank you. Epochal teachings. That have come. The mysteries of the kingdom building men and women some of you have seen your lives changed you've seen the anointing at work in your life mighty dimensions of grace thank you Jesus hallelujah one last prayer point I want you to thank God for your family. I know some of them are not here on their behalf. If you ever lie to me and say you did not see his hand this year, you will not be fair. You know what January was. You know what December is right now. Lift your voice and say, Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mighty God. Mighty God. Thank you for our families. Many God born again this year. Many God filled with the Holy Spirit. Many found direction for their lives. The words you Turns things around. Help me. advance to thank him for the balance of the year into 2017 because you must get here don't ask don't ask lift your voice and say lord i thank you your promises are yea and amen and i say thank you no devil will stop my eyes from seeing it. i give you praise i give you praise i give you praise I give you praise in advance that sickness will not go with me to 2017 I give you praise are you giving him praise Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have given God praise. I want to release something upon your life that you will take back home. For when you give him praise, you provoke a dimension of his glory. You provoke a dimension of his grace. I want to pray for you from the depth of my heart. You have given thanks. It's time for you to carry the anointing and the grace that will help you finish. So that you don't go home crying again. You go as an ambassador. Listen. Listen. On Tuesday, I had a great time in the prayer department. Inside, outside, any of the overflows. I want you to be very sensitive now. I want to pray for you. The prayer department, I had a great time with them. And one of the things I shared with them, listen, is that the level of grace and unction you carry defines your possibilities in this kingdom. Not just the name of Jesus. Listen, please. Our possibilities are defined by the level and the kind of unction that is at work in our lives. Are we together now? Mm. Hundred dollars and hundred naira are all the same denominations, but not the same value. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Every challenge you face that is lower than the level of the grace and unction you carry will be solved. But every challenge you face that is higher than the level of grace and unction you carry will not be solved. Scripturally, you will see that it should be solved. But the dynamics of bringing the result to your life is that you must upgrade through understanding and impartation to a level that will afford God to release the possibilities at the level that you desire. Are we together now? Our lives are limited. 
by the level of grace and unction that we carry from january to december god has been faithful over our lives some of you now are going home there are all kinds of yokes of darkness waiting to mock god like they did last year but you are going back with an unction so that what could not happen last year i want you to believe what i'm telling you our possibilities there are some of you if you do not introduce the anointing you are about to receive in your family they will not celebrate christmas well because there are orchestrations of hell but for your presence and so you appear there and introduce a mystery that disarms principalities and powers your understanding and the anointing are the keys you need to command victory your understanding and the anointing not just the anointing not just your understanding they work together like your left and right hand so an anointed life with a wrong paradigm will limit its operation a healthy paradigm with no anointing will stimulate the the expectation of possibilities that may never happen you need both a renewed mind which you have received all through this year please i'd like you to pray one minute with your heart open and say lord i desire this grace let let it come upon my life and make the difference the difference i have given you praise please pray hallelujah hallelujah i will speak over everyone but let me just pray for the heads of department just the heads of departments and the maybe the ministers please quickly quickly just in one minute i feel like doing that for them and then i'll just pray for everybody at grace There is an unction from the Holy One. They have walked in measures of grace. Join them, Pastor Alpha. Femi, join them. Promise, join them. Father, you have honored this house. You have brought grace upon us. Lord, I pray that the leaders will carry strange levels of grace. Please believe what is coming on you. Don't trivialize it. I will pray for you. Strange grace. Grace. Strange grace. Strange grace. Strange grace. Strange grace. Strange grace. 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 In the name of Jesus. for the next level from your spirit man in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ strange grace strange grace by the power of the Holy Ghost fire strange grace 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 for the next level in the name of Jesus Christ fresh grace fresh grace fresh grace fresh grace for the next level lift your hands please everyone lift your hands in the name of Jesus the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing smoke and it's coming on people the Lord is saying this is a prophetic grace Lord I release my hands right now receive that grace right now receive that grace right now take it I place it upon your spirit receive that grace prophetic grace privy to insights in the spirit privy to insights in the spirit receive that grace right now receive that grace right now receive that grace right now i want to pray a prayer that everyone should release there is a grace that releases the creative power 
of the word of God not the revelatory power revelation informs creation makes if I tell you God said this will happen listen I want you to believe me I'm about to release something on your life that when you speak there is a kind of unction that can leave your words and create realities not inform people it will happen I stand in the name of Jesus under this apostolic and prophetic anointing father inside and outside let men be baptized into this realm of reality receive that baptism right now creative dimensions creative dimensions inside outside receive it in the name of Jesus 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 it's not just speaking there is a level of grace I want to pray for you God has shown me favor this year in my life in a way and a dimension that I can only give him glory father I pray that Esther anointing that causes men to arise mysteriously in the name of Jesus take that anointing to your homes take it in your life Papa, take it, take it. You can't stand it. It must come upon you. It will land upon your spirit, man. That Esther anointing. That Esther anointing. Help them, please. Please help that lady somewhere. In the name of Jesus. Aaron, that anointing is coming on your wife. An angel of the Lord is pouring that oil upon your wife. It's a new season of favor. A strange season of favor. A strange season of favor. A strange season of favor. I hear my spirit restoration. 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 The mantle is falling. Restoration. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Restoration inside and outside. I don't care what has left you. Help that mother please. Restoration of gifts. Restoration of dimensions. Restoration of levels in the spirit you once carried that have left you. I release that grace on you right now. Strange restoration. A level of wisdom that you have never seen in your life illumination by the spirit to know what to do part time wisdom manifesting as divine direction ah, yeah, 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 yeah. divine strategies receive it right now in the name of Jesus know what to do I command your spirit to know what to do by the illumination of the word of God I put the word of God upon your spirit and I command access to light access to illumination every prophetic word that came upon your life in January and is yet to find expression in the name of the Lord God of heavens between now and 31st December let there be a performance a strange performance a strange performance a strange performance I pray for you the mystery of exemption that when men say there is a casting down there is an anointing that can exempt men I decree and declare that as that unction comes upon you you are strangely and evidently exempted strangely and evidently exempted in the name of Jesus I'm praying 
anyone here being eyed by the spirit of death the spirit that snatches the lives of men 28th 29th 30th where men die some even December 31st by 6 o'clock I command in the name of Jesus I forbid the earth from taking the body of anyone anyone marked for death here I extend your life by the word of the Lord I extend your life in the name of Jesus Christ I want to pray for you listen some of us are going to the village now listen we are not in darkness as to the wickedness that is in villages the Spirit of God is doing something in this lady there is restoration that God is bringing there are people who are going to villages and there are wicked spirits enforced by the presence of men don't say it does not exist that snatches the way people go peacefully and return back divorced I pray for you whoever plays with your life I stand upon this altar I command the earth to open up and swallow them I say it again any man that makes any enchantment any invocation over you or your loved ones the earth will open and swallow them I was talking with a lady today we are rounding up who shared something very touching with me where she comes from there are certain rules and regulation there are some trees you don't touch you touch those trees by mistake you pay for it with barrenness or something mysterious so if you mistakenly just see orange or guava and you decide to pluck it and eat it that will be the end of it she said the ground the soil where their compound is their house that you can stand there if anybody stands on it or something and makes invocation except somebody anointed intervenes it must happen and then some I think a relative to them now went and stood there and made a pronouncement over the family whether there was something about building house and he said whoever builds that house that as he's reaching sink level let the person die I said they should go to the village and tell that man that they met someone called Joshua Selman searched through witchcraft they call your name they die like chickens I tell you they call your name they die like chickens listen don't let men threaten you with nonsense value what you have a man born of a woman it exists and it will work until your light bails you out but let me tell you something I say it again I don't know who has said what Job said he will deliver you from the scourging tongues of men I decree and declare and I reverse any pronouncement made over any family in the name of Jesus Christ <laughs> hallelujah a lady told me something the other day that there is I think a clan or a family where some people come from whether they are cursed or something they, they cannot marry they can't do I, I, I think she was telling me something like that for doing nothing once you are born into that family they say a curse is on you and truthfully speaking if someone marries you or whatever it is that's the end of it now what did you do wrong did you decide your bet somebody did something somewhere and now you are a victim of a stupid statement everybody shout no way shout it no way listen some of you have allowed that lie that's why you don't prosper hold on please let me just talk for one minute this thing is boiling my spirit there are people who will not break certain barriers because someone has indoctrinated you into believing that there is a covenant of poverty and truthfully the devil has leveraged on your thinking and you are seeing it happen and it's true there are families like that 
you do everything it will not work but in the name of Jesus the son of the living God I prophesy over your life I don't care how long it has been break that barrier in the name of Jesus break that barrier in the name of Jesus listen don't think I'm just talking I understand witchcraft I've told you my grandmother was an idol worshiper she used to brew beer for masquerades so don't think that they gave back to me inside plane I was just flying and enjoying myself I've told you how demons witches and wizards used to oppress me as a man of God preaching with anointing come on now whatever the devil has taken from you I don't care when in the name of Jesus the Bible says if you catch a thief he must return tenfold I command supernatural restoration now this year will not end till you are restored fully restored Hallelujah. finally I pray for you the grace that distinguishes men it's called the oil of gladness therefore God even thy God has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows not for the purpose of competition but to set a standard that is established in righteousness I pray for you in the name of Jesus the grace that has distinguished this ministry may that grace start walking and speaking in your life from today You will travel and not even a nail the, the your your tire not even a nail the tire will not match even a nail in the name of jesus christ for those of you who are afraid the spirit of fear the bible says and to deliver them who through fear have all their lifetime been subject to bondage fear is a dangerous spirit if there is any voice speaking to anyone here you will not make it next year I reply that voice as representing the voice of Jesus I command that devil to be out of your life forever <laughs> lift your hands and give him praise <laughs> hallelujah please let's keep standing everyone overflow all the overflows let's keep standing let's keep standing everybody this is the last service there are people here right now who have never please listen this is our last service this year and I know there are people first overflow second overflow outside who are saying man of God if you would give me the opportunity I really want to make it right with Jesus I love him but for some reason I've derailed from the ways of God and others are saying I've never really made that genuine decision I know there are many of you outside while you heard me speak the Holy Spirit was ministering to you that is calling you into a deeper level two groups of people those who have never made a genuine decision for Jesus and those who are saying I don't want to end this year like this I have seen the message of God but I do not want to take his mercy for granted wherever you are I'll count one to five very quickly please don't be ashamed don't wait for anyone to come you are the first leave your seat right now and God bless you as you make your way to the front quickly one God bless you God bless you clear the way for those outside I know there are people coming God bless you the Holy Spirit is speaking to people God bless you Koinonia you are appreciating them two God bless you keep coming clear the way for those outside those coming outside please double up you can follow both of the doors in this overflow follow the main door and then the other overflow follow the side quickly three the Bible says for God so loved the world for God so loved you that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life four one more count and we're done please double up please double up God bless you you are still seated the Holy Spirit is saying you should come out win that war tonight don't fight him make your way to the front make your way to the front 
hallelujah thank you so much this is the greatest decision literally you've heard men of god say it and it's not just some emotional thing because we inherited it it truly is the greatest decision to not only make jesus lord of your life but to surrender everything to him lift your right hand with me and i want you to say this truthfully you are not reciting a poem there is a miracle happening right now say after me lord jesus i love you with all my heart and i believe that you are the son of god i believe that you were raised from the dead for my justification tonight i receive eternal life into my spirit i declare that i'm a child of god the spirit of god lives in me from today the grace to live the victorious christian life is released upon me in jesus name let me pray for you father i present these ones to you they have made genuine decisions for your glory let today be the beginning of the greatest days of their lives in the name of jesus i decree and declare that your sins are forgiven the power of sin is broken over your life the flesh has no place in your life again in the name of jesus you're under the full influence of the spirit of god from now in the name of jesus christ i pray amen and amen god bless you thank you for this great decision i'd like you to follow the gentleman waving his hands they will just communicate a few details to you and you'll be back to your seat god bless you please sit down for just a minute thank you jesus hallelujah before i make welcome all those who are worshiping with us for the first time i usually would do this before the announcements but I dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development lord grant me the discipline